I want to be royalty. I want to have power. So I'm learning about all of the monarchs in England, you know, throughout history. It's the conquerors and the ones that inherited all of their wealth and glory. I guess I plan to do both. King Edward VII, the eldest son of Queen Victoria and Prince Albert. He took over the throne after Victoria's reign. In addition to being King of the United Kingdom and the British Dominions, he was also Emperor of India. His reign was from 1901 to 1910. Yes, we're in the 1900s now. He was nicknamed Bertie. Edward VII was also called the Uncle of Europe. Turned out to be a pretty successful ruler after many years of being quite the wild child. He was a poor student early on. Got a little bit better when he went to college. Victoria gave him very little responsibility when she was alive. He was to a great extent excluded from political influence. The extra free time that he had was used being a playboy prince. This really got under Victoria's skin. Albert, who was ill at the time, visited Edward to reprimand him and ended up dying two weeks later. Victoria basically blamed her husband's death on Edward and his irresponsible wild child ways. He married Princess Alexandra of Denmark and he had six children with her, but Edward had mistresses the whole time he was married, including the aristocrat Alice Keppel, who is the great grandmother of Queen Camilla. He was particularly effective in foreign policy dealings and bettering relations between Britain and other European countries, namely France, he was called the peacemaker, the popularity of unbuttoning the bottom of waistcoats is attributed to him, as is the English Sunday staple roast beef. Under his reign were things like the steam turbine propulsion and the rise of socialism. George V, the son of Edward VII and his wife Alexandra of Denmark. Just as an aside, Alexandra of Denmark, daughter of King Christian IX. He's my favorite. I think I'm related to him. Yeah. Anyway, George V reigned from 1910 to 1936, just in time for World War I, which George V fought against his cousin Kaiser Wilhelm II of Germany. I know that what I'm talking about here is supposed to be focused on George V, but personally, I find his cousin Kaiser Wilhelm II kind of fascinating, so allow me to digress. Kaiser Wilhelm was the eldest grandchild of Queen Victoria. He was the last German emperor and he abdicated in 1918, marking the end of the German empire. The reason why I'm emphasizing him is because he basically played an instrumental role just by being detested by George V in yet another example of family closeness and support. Wilhelm had a serious uh, Freudian Oedipus complex mummy issue going on. Uh, he had a tough birth, a breech delivery that disabled his arm. He had a love-hate relationship with Britain, possibly resulting from his weird relationship with his mother, never feeling fully accepted by his relatives. He had a horrible relationship with Edward VII and he was personally very unstable. Okay, so yeah, back to his cousin George V. George V changed the family name from saxe coburg Gotha to Windsor to distance ties to Germany. George V started the tradition whereby the monarchy delivered Christmas broadcasts. He was instrumental with his wife, Queen Mary, in developing the foundation stone of New Delhi, in 1911, King George V announced that Delhi was the new capital of India. The original capital was Calcutta. In 1911, George V basically was involved in the Parliament Act, which changed the powers of the House of Lords in relation to the House of Commons. It limited the duration of Parliament. 